Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen resurrection video. Today's fountain pen zombie is this 1952 to 1959 Schaefer Valiant Triumph Touchdown Snorkel. That's more names than a Leonardo. I found this gorgeous pen in an antique shop a couple of weeks ago. After going from shop to shop, finding one or two pens here and there, I suddenly came across a locked cabinet that had six trays of vintage fountain pens. There were at least 50 pens in those cases, and I picked through them all with my loop while the owner tapped his foot and looked at his watch, indicating it was already past closing time. I bought 14 pens from the shop, five on the first visit, and nine on the second time I was there. This Schaefer was one of the first five, which included a pristine 1960s Parker 61 in the original case, which you'll see next Sunday, a beautiful 1930s Waterman Starlet, and two 1920s BHR, or black hard rubber pens, one from Schaefer and one from Waterman. But today we're going to focus on this fascinating 1950s Schaefer with the many names and the most complicated filling system in the history of fountain pens, right now. <laughs> Today's fountain pen resurrection is the Schaefer Valiant. This one dates between 1952 and 1959. And what I'd like to do today is look at some of the history of this pen, show some before restoration photos, talk about the restoration process, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And because I've never used a Schaefer Triumph touchdown snorkel before, I'll go over the parts and features of the pen as well. Here is what the Schaefer looked like when I found it. Like last week's 1967 Parker 45 Insignia, this pen didn't need resurrection, more a resuscitation. You can see the video of the Parker 45 Insignia restore by clicking right here. This pen has some of the most interesting design of Schaefer's storied history. The Triumph nib, the snorkel, and the touchdown filling system. Now listen up students because there will be a quiz. Schaefer has had some of the coolest pen designs in fountain pen history. Of course, Schaefer was the first to produce the now common torpedo pen shape of the Schaefer Balance in 1929. They not only reshaped the outside of the pen, they reshaped the classic fountain pen nib shape with the innovative Triumph conical nib in 1942, like on this Valiant, and the inlaid nib in 1959, like the one on this 1970s Schaefer Targa. And they are every bit as beautiful as the nibs on this Pilot E95S and this Waterman Karen, in my opinion. And Schaefer not only invented the lever filler in the 1920s, they also made further innovations on filling systems with the touchdown filler in the 1940s and then the snorkel system, which was added to the touchdown filler in the 1950s. Take a good look. This is Schaefer's new snorkel pen, the only pen that ends dunk filling. With Schaefer's snorkel pen, a special filling tube extends like magic, and only this tube touches the ink. You see, the point is never dunked. Watch. See that ink go down. That pen is full. Then the tube retracts. That's how this pen gets its many names, as it has a Triumph nib, a touchdown, and a snorkel filler. The touchdown snorkel is what Richard Binder calls the most complicated fountain pen ever designed. It was introduced by Schaefer in 1952, and it was used in various models culminating with the Schaefer PFM, or Pen for Men, and then discontinued in 1963. This particular model is very similar to a Schaefer signature, which also is a Triumph and a touchdown snorkel. The difference between this Valiant and the signature is subtle, the difference being this Valiant has engraved grooves at the top and bottom of the cap band, and the cap band is gold filled rather than 14 karat gold, as on the signature. The cool thing about the signature was that you could send your signature to Schaefer and they would engrave it on the cap band for you at no extra charge. I think R. Lipkus saved a few bucks by getting the less expensive Valiant and having his name engraved on this cap band rather than his signature. Now let's look at this Schaefer Valiant and I'll try to explain how the various features function. Then we'll take it apart 
and see what makes it tick and why it's so complex. Here we see the torpedo shaped plastic top which tapers up to the Schaefer white dot which at the time meant a lifetime warranty but today means only a two-year warranty. There's progress for you. Then we have a beautiful elegantly shaped gold filled clip that is spring loaded and works on everything. The plastic cap tapers up to a very wide uh, gold filled cap band with aforementioned grooves on the top and the bottom and this one is engraved very deeply with R. Lipkiss. Whoever owned this pen, Mr. Lipkiss, Miss Lipkiss. It's a very nice pen. It's mine now. What's that? This is mine. <laughs> What's that, Basil? <laughs> and this cap band is three eighths of an inch wide. The edge of the cap is rounded and there's this very small drop to the barrel, which is straight to about here where it begins to tape away to the end plastic a knurled touchdown filler knob and the barrel is engraved with W.A. Schaefer Pen Company of Canada Limited, Goderich, Ontario, made in Canada. And Goderich is a lovely little town in southern Ontario, Canada. And there's a small hole here somewhere. There it is. That small hole right there is important for the touchdown filler to work as it transfers air in and out. The cap unscrews with about three quarters of a turn to reveal a grooved tapering plastic section and the spectacular Schaefer Triumph conical 14 karat gold nib with a platinum mask on the end tip. Let's get a closer look at this exquisite nib. There's a heart shaped breather hole and then Schaefer's made in Canada 14K-585 for the gold content. And the elegance continues when you look at it in profile. The characteristic upswept Waverly style tip swoops down in two semicircles to the round conical bottom and the ebonite feed. And you can see that snorkel tube inside the feed. This feed is slightly damaged. One of those fins is missing right there but that doesn't affect the uh, function of this fountain pen at all and let's turn the end knob to extend that snorkel and get a good look at it as well the snorkel tube extends about three quarters of an inch and the end is beveled but this isn't just a hollow tube it has a very small feed system inside that allows for the proper flow of ink as well as air exchange this can get fouled with dry ink if the pen isn't properly maintained. The purpose of the snorkel is so that you can dip the snorkel in the ink without touching the tip actually of the nib in the ink at all. So you can fill your pen without getting any ink on that nib. The inside of the cap shows no sign of a cap liner. We can also see on the inside of that cap band there are those threads that match up with the metal threads on the end of the section. Let's back out and see how the touchdown filler works. Once the knob is turned and that snorkel is extended, the knob can be pulled out and the touchdown filler shaft can be withdrawn uh, from the pen. The snorkel tube is then dipped into the ink and the touchdown tube is pressed down into the pen with a quick stroke. That causes a vacuum inside. Uh, the sac inside this pen. The sac is compressed and then expands and sucks up ink. The snorkel can be withdrawn from the ink and then you turn the knob until that snorkel goes all the way back into the feed. No need to wipe up, no inky mess. Very cool system. We'll see in more detail how this system works when I take the pen apart. The grooves on the section make for an excellent grip on this pen. The pen is fairly slender, measuring just 9.6 millimeters at the bottom of the section. But these pens were part of Schaefer's TM or thin model line. And that was the trend back then towards thinner, more slim line pens that continued into the 1970s and the 80s like this early Schaefer Targa. Slim line pens. And there was an even slimmer version of this pen uh, called the slim line Targa. The pen is plenty long enough to write with very very comfortably posted the pen becomes fairly long but that cap weighs next to nothing 
and so it doesn't back weight or change the balance much of this pen at all very very comfortable writer now let's see how this pen ticks i was lucky with this pen in that it only needed a cleaning and did not require new sacks gaskets or rings and if that sounds like the parts for an internal combustion engine you're not far wrong there are lots of parts in this pen let's start by withdrawing the touchdown before we unscrew the section because this is spring loaded makes it easier so we withdraw that touchdown tube and extend the snorkel and then we'll unscrew the section and there's a small chrome ring at the top of the barrel and it takes a lot of turns to get this barrel off once it's off you see the spring system there that can be withdrawn and there is the snorkel unit with the sack protector right there and I was lucky this sack is in excellent excellent shape and didn't need replacement so the unit can be withdrawn from the section and there is the snorkel unit right there it looks vaguely like a syringe which is basically its function this is as far as I disassembled this part of the pen but it can be further disassembled uh, this needle unit here can be withdrawn from this metal collar which is crimped in place and you can replace the sack on that I don't need to do that so I'm not going to the nib and section further disassemble by turning the nib unit and withdrawing it from the section and there on the bottom of the nib unit there's a rubber gasket that seals the snorkel inside that unit again that didn't need to be replaced it's in really really good shape and so you can take this pen apart to this many pieces without any special tools or know-how and it can all be cleaned out and the barrel can be further disassembled by going into it with a slot screwdriver and removing that slot screw at the bottom which detaches this knob and then you can withdraw that tube again none of that further disassembly was necessary in this case thank the pen gods there are kits you can buy that have all of the maintenance pieces you need to replace the gaskets and o-rings oh yeah there's an o-ring at the bottom of this unit as well i recommend watching steph's definitive guide on how to disassemble and restore a schaefer snorkel touchdown on his youtube channel grand mia pens I'll put the link in the description to clean this pen I took the pieces apart as I showed you and I put the nib unit and the snorkel uh, in my ultrasonic cleaner with pen flush my pen flush is nine parts distilled water and one part liquid ammonia with a couple of drops of dish soap like dawn or joy I kept them soaking until no signs of ink could be flushed through them then I squeezed the snorkel of any water and left it nibbed down in a cup with a paper towel wad in the bottom overnight to pull out any remaining water then I polished the nib using my jeweler's cloth just like this see all that black that's coming off on the jeweler's cloth that's gold and as you can see it came up gleaming like brand new as for the plastic parts I dredged them in Meguiar's uh, mirror glaze swirl remover 2 it's a very fine cut abrasive polish that works wonders on plastic celluloid ebonite and even gold I don't use it on gold plate as it can cut right through thin gold plate easily just a little dab of Meguiar's and push the barrel into the polish just like that and then I get out my microfiber cloth and use some elbow grease then I use my clean microfiber cloth to polish it up so a little bit of elbow grease and it comes up beautiful some elbow grease and Meguiar's polish and even 100 year old ebonite like this Schaefer black hard rubber pen from the 1920s comes up like brand new look at the before photos of this pen it was very very dull and discolored now look at it 
marvelous shiny black beautiful and that gold nib we'll be looking at this pen very soon so the nice thing about the Meguiar's is it doesn't go very deep into the surface so it won't take out gouges and deep scratches so it leaves those in place and I think those marks give it a, a certain authenticity and keep its vintage kind of vibe going and that patina that's built up over the years but it uh, certainly shines up beautifully now that I've cleaned and polished the pen let's put it back together again there are so many moving parts in a snorkel touchdown some silicone grease in some strategic places is in order so on the snorkel I'm gonna put a little grease on the snorkel itself and on this little collar that goes into the section and just a little dabble do you and then threading the needle if you look down through the section you can see daylight down through there and I just point the needle at the daylight and push it through and there are little notches that line up to align it with the section but then you have to get the snorkel lined up as well so I push it through to see which way it's oriented and one more turn and there it's lined up so we can push it all the way through then we can put the spring on and the spring goes inside this little collar right there so you have to slip it down inside there and once the springs on we're going to extend the touchdown filler tube and I'm going to put a little silicone grease on that as well to make it slide nice and smoothly that works nicely and then we slide the barrel on now Steph recommends putting a little bit of shellac on these threads to uh, fix that barrel down because once you've restored the pen there's no need to go back into that barrel um, afterwards until you need to replace the sack again which shouldn't be for another uh, couple of decades I think I like to leave my options open uh, so I'm gonna leave it like that and since I'm never getting rid of this pen it'll be in my possession I know it's not shellacked shut and then we should be able to push the touchdown filler and hear that little air coming through so remember that hole that I told you about at the back there should be able to hear that vacuum releasing and then you can screw the knob hey that's what she said and retract the snorkel and the fingerprints a wipe there we go recap the pen and we're done now let's fill the pen with some ink and here we have the best ink for vintage pens with rubber sacks this is waterman's serenity blue it reportedly is the gentlest ink to put into a vintage fountain pen so we're going to use that let's take the cap off and we're going to extend the snorkel there we go and pull the touchdown filler out and then we're going to place just this snorkel into the ink Get this on camera just the snorkel into the ink and we're going to push down quickly and leave it in the ink for a couple of seconds to allow that sack to fill up and then we should be able to just close down the knob which withdraws the snorkel no Kleenex no fuss no muss now that we're full of ink let's look at some size comparisons and here is the circa 1952 Schaefer Valiant Triumph with a 1970s Schaefer Targa a 1967 Parker 45 a 1920s Schaefer BHR or black hard rubber and a modern Waterman Karen now let's look at them posted and here they are posted you can see that the Schaefer Valiant is the longest of the group but aren't these some gorgeous nibs along here they're all 14 karat gold the conical nib the inlaid nib the semi hooded nib a classic number five size 14 karat gold Schaefer's nib from the 1920s and an 18 karat gold semi inlaid Waterman Karen nib 
Now let's look at them unposted. And with the exception of the 1920s Schaefer lever filler, uh, these are all plenty long enough to write with unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the video. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the 1952 Schaefer Valiant and it has a 14 karat gold I'm going to call it a fine nib the size of the nib is not marked on the pen and let's check the wetness it is decently wet and the nib is very smooth with a good amount of feedback so those of you that like feedback in your nibs you'd enjoy this one And the ink today, as I showed you, is Waterman. Waterman's Serenity Blue. So I'm using that ink because this pen has a rubber sack in it, and we want to uh, maintain that sack for as long as possible. So I'm going to use a very safe ink with it. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com and as to line variation you can press a little bit out of this but this conical nib is relatively stiff and should not be flexed but that doesn't keep it from having some line character as you'll see and this nib makes a 0 0.5 millimeter line which makes it a western fine or a Japanese fine to medium and for our quote and for some reverse writing actually works it's very thin very dry and not scratchy at all and for some quick writing feed has no difficulty keeping up whatsoever so here are my thoughts on this pen I'm thrilled with this vintage pen not only did it clean up without any need for major repairs of its many moving parts, but I also got it for less than half of its cleanup value. And more than that, this is one of the coolest Inspector Gadget fountain pens ever created. Put all other things out of your head except obtaining the balls. Okay. Gadget on! Wow! It looks like something that James Bond would carry. This is a class four grenade. Three clicks, arms the four second fuse, another three disarms it. Oh, grow up, Dalosim. They all said the pen was mightier than the sword. You extend the snorkel and it's an antenna to speak with the chief at control headquarters. Hello, Central. I'm switching to my eyeglasses. But I hold on my wallet, but keep my shoe open. <laughs> so the cool factor is through the roof with this pen. And the pen writes like a dream. It is different than any other fountain pen nib I've experienced on the page. There's no flexibility in the conical nib. 
but the way it creates a line on the page is very unique. It almost forces your hand to do swoops and flourishes you didn't know you could actually do. It is so much fun, I doubt I'll ever think of selling this pen. Although if I did, I'm sure I could get at least double my original purchase price for it, even though it looks like it belonged to R. Lipkus. Hey R. Lipkus, wherever you are, I'll cut you a custody deal. And now it's time for that quiz I promised. Now we have a rather unique way of keeping track of the score as we go along. We do it on our Menon scoreboard. It just so happens that there are exactly 20 letters in the expression Menon products for men. And as each question is asked, the letter lights up, and as we go along, we know where we stand. Which of the following is the Schaefer Valiant's coolest feature? One, the conical triumph nib. Two, the snorkel filler tube. B, the touchdown vacuum filler. Four, a coiled spring. E, a white dot or seven, all of the above. Please put your answer in the comments below and explain your choice. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.